Hi there, it's Audrey again. I'm here to talk about radical acceptance. Uh, this is a therapeutic technique that is used pretty often in various forms of therapy. I learned about it when I used to teach DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, in a group setting. And it's a really great skill, so hopefully I can explain to you what it is and how to use it. So first, I was going to ask you to ask yourself if you've ever said things like this to yourself when something bad happens. Things like, this can't be happening, or it's not fair, or it can't be true. Certainly when you hear about something devastating, you might say, I, I don't want to believe this. Um, and also just resisting things and being like, it shouldn't be this way, I can't stand this, and just kind of rejecting what is actually happening. This is pretty common. I think a lot of people in their life have experienced an event or something that has occurred that really questions their sense of who they are, what reality is, and what they think should be happening versus what is happening. So radical acceptance is this skill, which is basically the word radical, which is used politically a lot nowadays, is to radically accept things that have happened mostly in the past so that you can move on and focus on the present and being here right now. And the reason this is important is a lot of people hang on to things that happened in the past and they still they continue to resist them even though the thing that happened in the past is done it's over and there's nothing you can do about it so radical acceptance is accepting life on life's terms that you know not resisting change not resisting things you cannot change um and it is however cheesy that's it's, it's saying yes to life just as it is a lot of it is saying that admitting to yourself that you don't have control over a lot of things and that once things happen and there are in the past what's done is done and um, I think also admitting to yourself that some problems cannot be solved I feel like as a counselor I hear a lot from people like I just want closure like they'll have a breakup with someone and then the person will ghost them and they'll say to me, I just want some closure. And the truth is, sometimes we just don't get the answers that we want in life. We don't get, we don't get to know how people really feel or what really happened. And we do have to come to, we have to come to terms with that. We have to accept that in order to continue living our life and not being kind of paralyzed by things like that. So the way I think of it, for people is that sometimes people get stuck. That's the term I usually use. They get stuck on things. And I see that a lot as a counselor when I work with someone who's just, there's something they're just, they can't let go. Um, sometimes I've called it like the pit bull. They have the, you know, the uh, lock jaw when they just sort of bite down and they won't let go. And I think sometimes our brains do that. Like something happens, we don't want it, we don't like it. We reject it entirely and we just hang on really tight without kind of loosening up and like kind of st taking a step back and being like, I don't like this, but it did happen. So there's, I just, I feel like this is a really relevant thing. People get stuck on things that happened in the past and they resist it perhaps because it's too painful for them to admit that it happened. Um, but we do have to admit to ourselves, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but that you can't change the past. And uh, the exercise of radical acceptance is really a way of, just not resisting it anymore and just saying what happened happened and now I'm going to I'm going to move forward. All that said, uh, I want to make it very clear that radical acceptance doesn't mean that bad behavior is okay just because it happened in the past. And it also doesn't mean that you condone other people's bad behavior. So if some really bad things happened to you in the past, for instance, abuse or something along those lines, I'm not actually suggesting that you should just forget about it. That's not what I'm saying. Bad behavior is always bad, no matter what. But it is more of a thing where it's not that you're condoning people's bad behavior, but there is this idea of stop fighting, to, to not fight that it happened, and instead actually focus more on admitting to yourself that it happened and practicing a form of forgiveness. Um, and some of that forgiveness is really forgiving yourself. Um, for things that you may have done in the past or whatever part you might have played in certain scenarios and also perhaps Forgiving people that are really hard to forgive um, 
So, and then, you know, the second bullet here, some of these past events that I'm talking about that people get stuck on are not just about other people. It's not just that they were wronged by someone else. Sometimes that they were the ones that did the wrong thing. Um, I've worked with people before who've been um, arrested, who uh, themselves have been abusers, and that's a really heavy weight to, to, to carry around. Um, but part of practicing acceptance is forgiving yourself so that you can come to terms with that and again, not get stuck on it. Um, so ulti ultimately radical acceptance in, in DBT is also taught kind of in tandem with mindfulness meditation. And the reason why, if you can get on this level, is that mindfulness meditation is about being in the present moment and not about focusing on the past or you know on the future because the, the logic goes that the past is where depression usually lies when you, when you ruminate on old things. And the future is where our anxiety is because things that have yet to happen. So mindfulness is like, here we are right now, let's just be here now. And radical acceptance is saying, okay, let's not focus on these things that have already occurred because we can't do anything about them. Let's radically accept that they did happen and then try and be here right now. So uh, to sum all this up of, of what it is, uh, radical acceptance is admitting that you can't change what's already happened. There is no time machine. We can never go back in time and change uh, our fate or what is, you know, I just thought of Back to the Future, the movie where he does do that. Uh, but yeah, that's Hollywood. It's not reality. Um, so, when you, when you truly radically accept something, you admit to yourself that you have, don't have control over it and um, you stop fighting against what has already happened because when you do fight against things that have already happened, it generally just causes you pain because it's kind of futile. And uh, again, this is the mindfulness part all over again. We're going from the past to the present moment. This moment right now, even me speaking to my computer alone in a room during the pandemic, this is the only moment I have control over. I do not have control over what has already occurred in my life for the last X amount of years. And moving forward, obviously I do have some control, but there's really not much point in, in fixating too much on that. I should really just be here at this moment talking to you and giving you my full attention. So um, that's the part of where should your energy be? And uh, in counseling, I, I, I think I've truly come myself to believing that we are all in a better place when our energy is mostly in the present moment. Obviously, we can't always put all our energy in the present moment. We have to think ahead to a degree to make plans, to make sure we have supplies that we need during the pandemic for the foreseeable future. But really, we're happiest when we're right here, right now. And it's something that you can ask yourself a lot. Like I actually saw John Kabat-Zinn speak, I don't know, a few years ago, and I'll never forget, I was in a room with a thousand people, which seems really weird now, and he said, this is it. And I didn't know what he meant for a second. I was like, what does he mean, this is it? But what he meant is, this is it, this moment right now, this is it. And it was such a powerful thing when he said it, because I was like, wow, he's right. This moment right now is the only moment. And so radical acceptance is this way of kind of freeing yourself from kind of the chains of the past that you have no control over anymore and really just embracing the present moment. So, but I do want to say, if you want to practice radical acceptance, which I encourage you to try, you should start small before you go big. And by that, I mean, you should first try radical acceptance with smaller things that happened in the in the past that were unpleasant like if you had a fight with a friend um or you know like for instance i moved when i was in second grade and it was really hard for me i can radically accept that because it happened a long time ago so radically accepting smaller things first might be the best place to start and then when you get good at that then you can build you can work on on bigger stuff that's happened to you and that would be like if you had a really difficult breakup or a divorce or if you lost a job um, or, you know, for some of the students I teach, uh, maybe you didn't get into the school or the program that you want or you didn't get the internship you wanted. Uh, those are harder things to accept. But when you do accept those things, it's almost easier to move forward in life and kind of look into the present moment, into the future, because in a way, at least the immediate future is a little bit, at least it's more tangible than the past. 
So lastly, I just am giving you a few scenarios of ways you can try radical acceptance. So these are just questions. Can you radically accept something that happened to you when you were a child that was hard at the time? So like I mentioned, I moved in second grade. I remember, you know, having to change schools and I have a very vivid memory because it was in the winter, which is even worse because it was in the middle of the school year. I was sitting on a log, which I don't know why they had in the, <laughs> in the playground and it was snowy and I was wearing a snowsuit and I just sat in this log and I was crying because I didn't know anyone at this new school and no one seemed to really want to know me and it was just a really sad moment and it's always stuck with me but I can radically accept now that that was just a tough moment in my life and that it happened and that in the end I, I did make new friends and my life did move forward and I did recover from that move. Um, can you radically accept a breakup that happened several years ago? I, like everyone I've had plenty of breakups and I'm not going to go through them but I have radically accepted a lot of them that they happened even at the time when they were super painful. Can you radically accept something uh, that you did that you knew was wrong at the time. I'm not going to tell one of mine, but I do have something I did with a friend in college that was a prank uh, that thankfully we didn't get caught doing. Um, but I do think, you know, that's one of the ones that I think I've tried to radically accept that I did something so stupid with a friend of mine because we've all done stupid things before. Um, and so those are some of the like maybe easier ones on, the, on this on the left, but on the right, these are ones that get harder. Can you radically accept that something you really wanted to happen didn't? So that's like getting into your first choice college. I did not get into my first choice. I don't even think I've got into my first like five choices, quite frankly, um, did, or getting a job that you wanted. Like, can you radically accept those things? And then can you radically accept the death of someone you knew? I think that can be tough too. I think that death is really complicated and sometimes it takes us months, if not years to accept that. So if you've ever had a death in the family or a death of someone you knew that was really difficult, it's not something I'm asking, I would ever ask someone to do immediately, but over time, you know, like a year later, three years later, five years later, it's, it is good to revisit it and say, can you accept that? And then the last one question I have for people is, can you radically accept that the pandemic is happening even if we don't want it to? I think that one's a hard one right now. I think we're all resisting change and we're all you know, going through some grief right now about the way our life used to be, about all the ways that it is not the way it used to be and that we don't like, like being stuck at home, like not being able to go to restaurants, like for college students not being on campus anymore, not being able to see friends in person, not being able to give people hugs, having to wear masks and gloves to the supermarket or do anything. These, this is really hard. I think the pandemic is, is it truly hard for all of us. So, I, but I do think radical acceptance is a way of not resisting the fact that it's happening and just saying, okay, it is happening even if I'm not ready for it, even if I don't like it, but just submitting to ourselves that it is happening and we don't have any control over most of it besides our own behavior. And that, you know, that might actually cause less distress and less anxiety in our lives if we just get to that place where we can radically accept that things aren't the way we want them to be. So anyway, that's my talk on radical acceptance and the concept of it. I encourage you to try and use this skill. Um, there's books about it. <laughs> I'm sure there's, you know, I, I saw some articles about it online. Maybe there's a TED talk. I don't know. Um, but if you want to ask me any questions, you're welcome to, to follow up and, and leave some comments on my YouTube or anywhere else. Thanks so much.